Sometimes you have a situation where you want to show text on a touch panel that's based on an input selection or something that you've chosen or something that happens in your program. So in this example, I'm going to show you how you can use a serial I.O. to basically feed serial text to a touch panel. It's one of the most simple things you can do from a serial I.O., but it's something that isn't necessarily immediately obvious if you've never worked with Crestron before. So I'm going to drag in under serial, a serial I.O. I'm also going to drag in a make string permanent. Now this isn't always required with newer touch panels, but basically it keeps the string that you generate so that it can be reused. And that's handy if you're feeding the string to other things in your program. It's a good habit to get into. The other thing I'm going to do is go to my device view here. I'm going to add just a sample touch panel onto my ethernet stack. I like to do it just by double clicking. I find it easier. I'm going to add a TSW560. And then I'm going to bring this up here. Expand that out. So here on my serial I.O. we could do source select one, and this could come from a touch panel press. I'm going to do Alt plus and expand that out. And then I'm going to shift and click here so that those two are highlighted and press F4. And that just, again, that increments that signal name. So say this signal or this source is DVD. This one is room PC. This one is laptop. I'm going to call this output string current source name text and now I'm going to run the output of this and you notice that this is black black indicates a serial signal blue indicates a digital and red indicates an analog we're not using analog in this example but it's just good to know if you're just getting into simple so I'm going to drag that there the other thing you can do is press F3 on a signal and it shows you how it's routed or you can press F2 on a signal and it shows you where it comes from and where it goes to. If you double click, it'll highlight it. So it's handy when you're trying to figure out what's going on when you're debugging. So here this parameter of permanent string size would be the maximum size you want or maximum size you would have on these strings. So this one here would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters. Um, we're going to make sure that we're a little bit safe. We'll just put it as 10. If you put that too small, like if we put that as three, then it would only hold the first three characters and basically it's chopping it off. So now we're going to route this to the touch panel. And this is basically all we need for the signal flow. Now I'm going to compile this. I also need to make a little demonstration of a touch panel. One other thing that I'm going to do, because I actually have a touch panel in my example, I'm going to hook these source selects all up to press this on a touch panel as well so we can really see the simulation. Now I'm going to compile it and I need to go build my touch panel quick and I'll load it and be right back. I just realized it might be useful to show you how I build my little touch panel just so you can see how to show the serial text from the touch panel. So I've just dragged in three regular buttons given them names and I'm going to give them joins. I'll just do these individually. There is a way to power assign these in, in a sequence, but for three I'm just going to do it like that. Now I want my result to show up as I'm just going to do it as format text I guess. And we're going to put it over here. Now there's a number of ways to do it. There's an indirect text serial join. That's the easiest way to do that. If I set that to 1, it would just write over whatever this is. But what I'm going to do that's a little bit fancier, underneath the label, I'm going to click the ellipses, the dot, 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 and I will say current source is, and then I will go under serial, join number 1. Default text is if it doesn't get anything from the control system, and it doesn't always default back to this. I guess you could say it's it's just if it never gets a string from the control system. So I use it more for when I'm setting up touch panels and I just want to see what the positioning of the text is. 
So I'll just put no source here. And so it shows this is actually the code that it, it will replace this with serial text one. Now the other thing we need to do is click multi-line support because we have that enter in there. And I need to expand this a bit so you can see it all. So that should be reasonable for what we want to do. So I'll compile this. And what I'm going to do now is actually run as an X panel pointing to my processor, IPID03. And so that's an X panel that's just waiting. And you can see the, the default, it doesn't always send it. I haven't really ever even looked as to why that is. It's not usually a big deal for what I'm doing. Because if I was going to send something when it was no source, I would do it from simple. So I'm just going to get the program loaded on the processor, and then we'll see it operate. So now we've got the program loaded, and I can start pressing buttons. I've got debugger running in the background here. It's actually connected. And press DVD. And source select sets the current text. And it shows there. Room PC and laptop. Now if you're testing and you want to send another string, I could just double click on this, type this, click send, and it sends that to the touch panel. The next time it sends from a button it will overwrite it. That's kind of handy for some troubleshooting and stuff. But this is basically just a simple way to send selected source text to your touch panel.